Welcome to IGSS Online Training. I'm Mike Torrance, Seven Technologies, Denmark. I'm here to present our scatter system, IGSS. Lesson three, running IGSS as an operator. The topics of this lesson, loading the IGSS configuration to go online, going online, and plant monitoring and controlling. Plant monitoring and controlling, I will show you how we go online and how we actually perform some of the monitoring functions in the IGSS software. To make sure we go online with the right IGSS configuration, <coughs> we first need to make sure we have it properly loaded in the system configuration module. After we save and exit the system configuration module, then we go online by clicking the IGSS starter icon. What we're going to do online, we're going to navigate in the system, we're going to control some objects on a diagram, we're going to handle alarms. We will not print reports, we will uh, come back to this topic in a later presentation. So the, the report uh, part of this uh, uh, demonstration uh, will come at a later time. And then we're going to see how we produce graphs and trends. Oops. Yeah. Well, let's go online now and see how this works. The first thing I do is I want to find the IGSS starter in the program group. And I have the starter located here. So, I click the starter to bring up the system. Notice here that I'm informed that I'm running simulated I am not collecting real data from PLCs, but I'm running in simulation mode. Then I just click OK to this message. The first thing I see when I come online <coughs> is this red square up here on the first diagram. This is a very important feature. This is one of the things that the operator really has to pay attention to. This is the alarm list. By double-clicking on the square, I bring up the active alarm list. Here I see a list of the alarms that are coming into the IGSS SCADA system from the process. The alarm list is divided into columns. I have a sequence number here on the left that tells me the order in which these alarms have arrived. I have an alarm number. I have an alarm text which tells me what the cause of the alarm is. And then I have the object name of the object that is issuing an alarm. I have a start date for the alarm and a start time. Here I have an acknowledged date and, a little bit further on, an acknowledged time. I can acknowledge these alarms from the active alarm list here by right-clicking and then choosing Acknowledge, which I'm doing now. I'm acknowledging the first alarm in the list. Notice that it changes color, indicating that acknowledgement has been accepted. And then when I look over here, under acknowledge date and acknowledge time, I have a timestamp telling me when the acknowledgement occurred. There's a lot of other information here in the alarm list, which we really don't ha have time to go through uh, in this presentation, but you'll have an opportunity to investigate this more closely in the, in the uh, exercise which follows. Let's look at some of the other things in IGSS. If I go up <clears throat> under diagram, I find that the name of the diagram I'm on now is called Welcome to IGSS. As you probably remember, uh, the IGSS software is divided into logical sections starting with areas. At the moment, I can see, when I click on the area menu, that I am in the global area. And then when I click on diagram, as I did just before, 
I can see that I only have one diagram in this area. I can navigate from here by changing areas. And then I can go on to the diagram menu again and choose which diagram I want to go to. I can do the same here by using these buttons to take me to the diagram that I need to go to. Let me go to the dairy diagram. Here <clears throat> I can see my objects that are in alarm. They're blinking. I can acknowledge an alarm on an individual object by again right clicking and then choosing acknowledge alarm. I do not have to always go into the alarm list. Notice the alarm count has fallen from 10 to 9 with an alarm acknowledgement. Now I would like to show you a trending graph which we have in this configuration called PST01 levels. By clicking the trending graph, then <clears throat> I start collecting data real time for my graph. Now <clears throat> the color scheme here is not really appropriate I think so I can go in and change some of these color parameters if I think that is necessary. I can see here that I'm measuring uh, a level in an object called PST01. Online, as we can see, the graph is being drawn as I look at it. And let's go back and see how we can do a trending graph ourselves as an operator. I do that by choosing Create Dynamic Graph. And then I have a dialog box which asks me for the period of time I want to generate this graph. So I'm going to start an hour before, maybe two hours before. Um, I can specify a graph period in days, hours, or minutes. And I'm going to just keep the default hours. And then I click OK. And now I'm informed that I really don't have enough data to de generate a, a dynamic graph in this configuration. So I'm going to say ignore all messages anyway. And <clears throat> what I see here is a graph for the object Q1, which I in fact had selected before to uh, acknowledge an alarm on. Every time you do that, every time you make an object selectable, uh, on the uh, diagram, then when you go into the uh, dynamic graph creation, this object will be placed in the dynamic graph. I can right click <clears throat> and I can save this graph as a dynamic graph. I have to give it a name. Give it a name, Q1 flow, for example and then I can save it. I close the graph and then I can reopen it again. And again, there's the graph. Now I want to navigate <coughs> back uh, to the main diagram, I can go down here and use this button to do that. And I'm back on the overview diagram that I started from. Now we'd like for you to try it yourself. Please do exercise working as an operator. This exercise requires loading the IGSS demo configuration. If you have downloaded the IGSS 350 and installed it, you must switch license files as follows. First, close all IGSS programs. Two, go to the IGSS install path slash GSS and rename the license file called options txt to options underscore original dot txt. Three, in the same folder, rename the file called 
options.demo to options.txt. When IGSS is online, it always uses the license file called options.txt. 4. The demo license is now active for your system. If you need to go back to Free50, reverse the naming procedure described above. 5. In System Configuration, open the File menu and choose Open Demo Configuration. Then you're ready to go. Thank you very much for your attention. For more information, go to our website, www.7tdk.igss.